Hello, my name is Alan Prost, and I'm going to teach you how to do arterial blood glass classification using vector analysis. Now you might be wondering, why would somebody use vector analysis to analyze arterial blood gases? But if you're like me, you probably learn better by seeing things visually, and that's one of the things that vectors do for us. They give us a visual representation of that relationship between pH, CO2, bicarbonate, and base excess. So that's what we're going to look at. We're not going to talk about oxygenation in this particular video. We'll talk about that at another time. Now, before we can talk about vector analysis, we have to know about normal arterial blood gases. We know that a normal PaO2 in arterial blood delivered from the heart is about 80 to 100 millimeters mercury. But we're going to focus on CO2, which is about 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury in our normal blood gas, and a pH of about 735 to 745. We're going to look at this interrelationship here to determine the difference between respiratory or ventilatory components and metabolic components in the blood gases. When the blood gas machine measures the CO2 and pH, it calculates for us a, a, a bicarbonate level and a base excess. We're going to focus on the base excess level because this gives us that relationship and tells us something about our CO2 and pH the differences between those and what the causative agents between ventilatory failure and metabolic changes are. Now, there are some basic concepts when we get talking about arterial blood gases. We know that increases in PaCO2 cause a decrease in pH because CO2 is an acid and when it's not blown off by the lungs and retained in the blood, we get an acidosis. We also know the inverse is true, that a decrease in pH uh, and CO2 levels causes an increase in pH or makes the blood alkalotic. So keep those in mind as we talk about blood gas interpretations. Another key component that we're going to be looking at when we're classifying our arterial blood gases is this normal base excess. Base excess. And that's, we're going to look at that because that gives us the relative changes between the pH and the CO2. So if there is no change in the base excess, so if it's just within the normal ranges, that means there's no metabolic involvement. If there's a low base excess, that tells us that somehow the body's retaining acids and has an increase in pH levels relative to the CO2 levels. So that would be a, a metabolic acidosis. If we have a relatively high base excess, the opposite is true, telling us that the body's retaining bicarbonate and excreting pH, so but the pH is actually uh, dropping as compared to the CO2 levels. So we're going to be looking in using base excess to help us with blood gas classification. So when we do vector analysis and to determine or derive our blood gas classification, we have three basic steps that we're going to follow. First, we're going to analyze the CO2. Then we're going to comparatively analyze the base excess and then finally look at the pH. And I'm going to give you some examples so you can see how this interplay and how we're going to follow these three steps. So this is our basic blood gas vector analysis map. And the instructions are written for you right here. So you can download this off the internet from my website. And I've got some links within, uh, within the videos that you can follow up on this. But the basic orientation is that we have three basic um, vectors that we're going to look at. Now, all the axes are the same along here. We see that we've got alkalosis on this side, so high pH, low pH is on this side. So this axis along here derives our pH. Now, we always start from the center. A normal CO2 level should give us a normal uh, pH and a normal base excess between that plus or minus 2. So we're all going to start our vectors from right here, and I'll show you how that's going to play out. So we've got three different, so we've got our normal CO2, our high CO2, and our low CO2 vectors that we're going to start with, and this will line us up. So I'm going to give you some examples to show you how we're going to use these in drawing up our vectors. So on our first example here, we've got an arterial blood gas, and you'll notice that our CO2 here is quite high. All right? So that leads us right away to our high CO2 axis or vectors that we're going to start with. So I'm going to zoom in and just show you that. So we've got a high CO2, and our first step, like we lined up before, is to choose our uh, high CO2 vectors. And we're going to start with drawing our vectors 
right here at the normal pH. So I always start with my respiratory vector, and this tells me that I should be going to the left here. All right, With a relatively high CO2, I should have a relatively low pH, and that's what tell, this vectors tell us. So I'm going to plot my respiratory vector right here, and it's going to take me to the left side of my graph. So that's my respiratory vector. The next vector I'm going to draw is going to be my base excess vector. All right, That's going to give me a clue about my metabolic status. So I start this right here, and you don't have to be very precise with those, right at the end of my respiratory vector, and it says that it's positive. Okay, So the base excess, as you can see here, is telling me that I should be moving on the positive direction. So I'm going to move that back towards the right. So this is my beta metabolic vector. How far do I move that? Well, this is my pH tells me right here that it's 7.28. So it's not quite all the way here to my um, normal pH range. It ends right here. And that tells me that my classification should be a partially compensated respiratory acidosis. So let me just recap that again. I start here um, with a normal blood gas. And I notice that because of my high CO2, I'm going to draw my respiratory vector to the left. There's my respiratory vector. And it doesn't have to be very close. In fact, I'm just going to line up with the arrow that I've got right here. Then I draw my metabolic vector. And I know I'm going to be going to the right with this one because I have a positive base excess. And my pH tells me, the third element in my analysis, tells me that I'm going to draw that metabolic vector to the right and stop it at about a pH about 7 to 8 or below the 7.35. And that leads me right to this zone right in here, the partially compensated respiratory acidosis. So that's my first classification from this blood gas. So let's look at another example here. In this example here, the first thing I'm going to look at again is my CO2. And that's a normal CO2. A CO2 of pH of 40 is a normal CO2. So I'm going to start here on my normal CO2 vectors. All right. And I'm going to start right here in the center like I always did for my metabolics. All right. And because my base excess is negative, all right, that tells me from my starting point here, I'm now going to, so you've got a negative on this side, so I'm going to go to the left from that. And I've also got a very low pH. So both of those are driving me to drive my metabolic vector right here towards the right. Now, in essence, I have no CO2 vector because I'm right here, right in my normal range. So this blood gas is going to lead me right down here, all the way down to my metabolic acidosis. All right? I only have a metabolic component. So let's look at that again closely. So I, just to reiterate, I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here from my predicted pH values. Because I have a normal CO2, I don't have any uh, CO2 vector from here. Because a CO2 of 40 should bring me within this normal range of blood gases. So I'm going to just leave it right there. Now, the next part of it is I have a negative base excess. So negative numbers are always going to be going to the left. All right. My pH tells me, <coughs> the third component, tells me how far down I'm going to go. So I'm well below my 7.35. So this takes me to a metabolic acidosis. That's what I, my metabolic component tells me. Now, when I have no respiratory component, just a straight metabolic component, there is no respiratory component at all, this tells me that my all the changes to my pH are due to retention of pH, retention of acids, retention of hydrogen ions in the body. So that's a straight metabolic acidosis. Now, our final example here, we're starting off with a CO2 of 24. So that's a very low CO2. So that brings me down to my lower vector right here and leads me off. I always start with my respiratory component here. So I'm going to start right here, always at the zero point, and then I'm going to plot where my pH should be due to the respiratory component. So this is my respiratory vector right here, all right? 
and then I'm going to plot my base excess and my pH vector, my metabolic vector. So I start here right at the end where that is, and you can see I've got a minus 12 and a very low pH. So let's draw that out here. Well, it's lower than 7.35, so that leads me all the way down here. So this red line going to the left indicates my metabolic vector, and it brings me all the way down here below, a P, below the uh, uh, pH of 7.35. So it's going to lead me right up into choosing a partially compensated metabolic acidosis. Now, a key thing to recognize here is that the metabolic vector is much longer than the respiratory vector. That's how come I know that this is mostly a metabolic problem, and the ventilation has partially compensated for that. So let's take another quick look at this once again. So, like always, my first step is to plot my CO2. I start from the normal here, all right, and I can see that my respiratory vector is forcing me to go to the right because it's a very low CO2. So I'd predicted, my predicted pH would be a very, very high pH. I don't need to know exactly what it would be. It's just going to be much higher. So this line here represents my respiratory vector. Now we're going to plot my base excess and my pH vector. So let's start down here. And I know that I should be very alkalotic from this blood gas, but because my base excess is minus, that's telling me that I should plot my metabolic vector to the left, correlating with my minus 2 base excess. It's greater than that, so it's to the left. And how far down it should go is dictated by my pH. So I'm going to keep drawing all the way down here, and it's lower than my pH is 735. So that brings me right here to a partially compensated metabolic acidosis. So this is my metabolic component here in the red. All right. Now what's really interesting about using this vector method is that you can see the respiratory vector and the metabolic vector are different lengths. That tells me the longer vector tells me that this is mostly a metabolic condition. The shorter respiratory vector tells me that it's a compensation, that I'm hyperventilating right now to try to make up for this dramatically low pH. If I wasn't hyperventilating, I'd even be more acidotic and my pH would be much lower than the 7.33 that it is now. So I'm hoping that this vector method you'll find useful when you're trying to analyze blood gases. So just to reiterate a little bit, we always start drawing our respiratory vector from this normal axis, regardless of which one that we're choosing. If we've got a high CO2, that tells me that my respiratory component uh, is, first of all, going to be drawn all the way back this way towards that um, acidosis because I've got a high CO2. If I've got a low CO2, I'm going to start off by drawing my respiratory vector to the right, like this. All right. The next thing we do is we draw our base excess or pH vector. So we start right from here. If it's a positive base excess, we're going to draw it to the left. If it's a negative base excess, we're going to draw it to the left. All right, And that starts us off with both of these in both the same direction. So if it's a positive base excess, I go to the right. If it's a negative base excess, I go to the left. And then my pH finally tells me how far I'm going to be drawing that vector. Okay, So I end up with two. I end up with a respiratory vector and a metabolic vector. Okay, By comparing those, you'll be able to analyze and classify any blood gas. It should tell you right here on the charts exactly which blood gas you're going to be, you're going to be dealing with. Thank you very much. My name is Alan Prost. Thank you very much for listening to this short video on blood gas classification using vectors.